Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Have you ever been abused but felt like you couldn't tell anyone because you didn't want to disrupt everyone's lives? You protected the abuser and you feel like you're the only one suffering in a situation. I know what it's like because I've been there. Yes, me too. Today, I introduce a new segment called Abuse is Not a Secret, where I allow women who have been abused to share their stories openly without judgment so that they can be heard. Today, we'll meet Kezia, a 25-year-old woman who shared a public Instagram post that claims she was repeatedly raped by her high school band director. Due to legal constraints, Kezia cannot mention his name anymore, but I can. Michael D. Scott. Go on, Kezia. We're listening. Hi, my name is Tezia, and I was sexually abused by my band director at South Howard High School. Um, whew, it started back in 2014 when I attended the school. I believe I was 17 years old at the time. Um, you know, he was my band director. I looked up to him. Like, I looked up to all of my band directors at the time. And um, he was someone I admired because he was very well respected. He is very well respected in his community and um, you know he had a lot of connections and I was just like that's someone I aspire to be because I was doing music at the time. I played the flute and the piccolo and it's something I wanted to continue and take into high school. I mean sorry to take into college and university. Um, so he definitely had a lot of my trust and he knew that I confided in a lot of my traumas to him. For example, like issues that were going on at home with my mom. They never had a good relationship. And he definitely twisted and used that against me, um, which is how he was able to gain power over me. But the sexual abuse started when I was 18 years old. I remember the week I turned 18, it was just like, oh, you get to have sex now with anyone you want. You're of age. Of course, at the time, it was like, that's weird. Like, Okay, yeah, but I'm thinking about going to college, university, and like focusing on music. I have all these competitions coming up. Like, why would you mention something like that? And from then on, it was, uh, I guess that was him opening the door to start the abuse, which followed after. Um, he definitely used alcohol as a gateway. So I remember us being on Hollywood Beach at one of the bars, little tiki bars, and he would just make us drink, drink, drink. He knew I hated spicy drinks. He would always give me fireball and he would force us to drink and would watch me drink. Um, then he would rent a hotel. By that time, I had like, you know, I'm pretty drunk. I don't even know what's going on because I'm also 18. So liquor is new to me and it's affecting me in a different way. And I just remember being in the hotel room with bottles on the table and he just grabbed me and was literally just having sex with me right on the bed. Like, never put on a condom, never nothing. And he just, I would beg him to stop and he would just keep going. Another time was in the band room auditorium. Um, we were sitting there getting ready for a concert and he was just like, let's sit down here. So we sat in the, you know, in the, in the audience, we sat in the audience. And he forced me to give him head, even though I was literally begging him not to. He grabbed the back of my head and forced me down onto it on to him. So those are just two little cases where that have happened that I'll speak on for right now. So it has definitely affected my relationships and it sucks because last year I got into a healthy relationship but I can't seem to commit. I can't find it in me to commit to anyone no matter the guy, no matter how great they are. And it has definitely cost me some really good guys. It has cost me some relationships and friendships just because so a lot of people aren't built like that and they don't think that's okay. And you know, that's how I operate. I'm trying to break it. But it has also affected my trust, especially in men. I never feel safe or comfortable around them. My anxiety is like, I'm always like shaking. If anyone like touches me from the back, I jump. Like small things like that. Well, not even small because those are big things, but it definitely affects the way I think and I view marriage. I don't want to get married. Um, I have no desire to because for right now, that's the picture I have. Um, of marriage and I don't want that. I've had seven years to reflect on this and I also didn't want to say anything because it does, you know, have a beautiful family and they don't deserve this because it wasn't their fault, it wasn't their doing. But at the same time, it's been eating me and destroying me and it's not fair it's for me to be the victim or the survivor, I'm sorry, and just let 
it overtake me when he's living his life freely. Um, and yeah, I was tired of it eating at me and I wanted to release it and let it go and give it back to its owner. And that's what I'm doing, finally. We hear you, Kezia, and we believe you. Thank you for the gift of speaking out so that other women will know that they can and should speak out too. If you or someone you know has been a victim of Michael D. Scott or any other abuser and you're tired of carrying the weight alone, reach out to me and I will have you on the feisty so that you can be heard. Abuse is not a secret. As for you, Michael D. Scott, you are a monster. You saw a little girl who didn't have anyone she could trust. And instead of protecting her, you became a predator, using her and raping her for your own pleasure. You know what? I hope you die in jail. And then I spit on your grave. You are a monster. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. News for women.